Okay. E... Vou ler aqui. Bom, eu vou mudar um pouquinho o assunto. Eu acho que ninguém falou aqui de bulk nessa... Hã? Eh? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I will change the subject here. Uh, nobody uh, talk anything about bulk systems here in this conference yet. And I will do so. And then I ask for some forgiving. Uh, because I will do a, a little big, uh, a bigger introduction than most. Okay, this does work uh, uh, by Fabio, uh, a former uh, master's student, now he's uh, out of the university, and Anderson that's finishing his master, uh, uh, is defending his master in uh, some days, and in collaboration with Horacio from Federal de São João del Rey. Okay, so uh, I, I will talk about uh, nitrides, and then it's, it's nice to, to state the nitrides uh, have been awarded the Nobel in 2014 for um, helping people get light all around the world, mostly. Okay, so it's a technological uh, Nobel, but it's an important thing uh, if you think that still has something that we can study on that uh, kind of systems. Okay, uh, another motivation we have here is that <coughs> I'm talking about bulk, but I'm not exactly talking about uh, bulk. Uh, why? Uh, because I'm talking about nanowires, but huge nanowires that laterally they are not confined. Okay, so in this sense, uh, I can grow some uh, quantum wells on it. Uh, and when, when I, uh, I go in quantum wells, the only, uh, the only confinement that I can use, that I, I, I must use, is the z-direction, the growth direction. So I can treat this kind of nanowires as a bulk material then, or I can use that then to do nanostructure. What is in interesting about these nanowires is that they have a coexistence of both phases. So we can have uh, vorticite and zinc blend structures coexisting. And this is a nice feature for us to, to understand. And it's also, so that, that's the nanowire, okay? So here, uh, these regions where you don't have these kinks are vorticite, clear vorticite regions, and these ones are zinc blend directions. In this growth uh, mechanism, uh, they are oriented in a very specific direction, okay? So zinc blend is oriented in one, one, one direction. And uh, vorticite is oriented along uh, the, the C direction uh, that we can, uh, we can see here. So uh, this is the C direction of vorticite. You can see that this, uh, uh, no. You can see that in vorticite you have uh, piling up A, B, and other, uh, the same uh, structure again. So uh, it's different, it's slightly different from zinc blend, where we have A, B, C. This is like uh, putting balls in a, in a way. So you have A, B, and C sides, and you, you keep doing that. It's compact zinc blend, but vorticite, uh, you have just the, <coughs> the absence of the third one. So they are uh, quite, quite similar when growing up, and just a, 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 a slight uh, change of, of, of uh, impiling, uh, change from one to the other. Uh, these guys treat uh, quite well, and then if you change just the temperature from 400 Celsius to 408 Celsius, you can uh, grow one and the other, and you can control this uh, change. And sometimes when you need a bulk system that is grows in vort uh, uh, actually uh, in nitrides, the, the vorticite is the most stable phase, and zinc blend is the less stable. But uh, this kind of growing can be used in other materials, gallium arsenide, for instance, having a vorticite gallium arsenide uh, grown on vorticite structure, a bulk one, you can uh, find with all the properties of a bulk one, with this kind of growing, okay? So this is also a continuation of a work that I have with Paulo Farias a long time ago, where we uh, assembled a model that could treat 
zinc blend and vertizite in the same Hamiltonian. And in this sense, we could calculate a, a, a quantum well uh, in this sense. But in this work, uh, in this work, we could not treat well uh, this strain. So uh, the team, uh, the subject of this, uh, uh, this talk is a strain. <laughs> then uh, when we were lo looking into this, uh, there is another feature on these nitrides that's uh, interesting, is that especially in this aluminum nitride, uh, you have an inversion of this, the ordering of these states. And uh, as you can see, this uh, uh, changes very fast. So uh, when you have this inversion of the order, you can have uh, dopants that uh, pile up in this. So uh, it may have also some uh, materials uh, properties that can be used to that. That is in this article from Van der Waal. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm calculating uh, through GFT these materials. I will use VASP, I will use PB and, uh, and hybrids, and that's just all I, I will talk about this. So, at first, if I'm trying to talk about strain, uh, I will need to get sure that the parameters are well calculated. And in this case, I'm just looking at uh, I, I forgot to say something. Let's go back. Uh, this here, this kink, is an indication that in zinc blend, you have uh, uh, the strain is not released easily. And in vertizite, the fact that in the, the surface here, it's flat, it seems that we have a very big, fast uh, uh, release of strain. Okay, so uh, I'm looking at uh, the vertizite to see if I can understand this strain. That's the point. Okay, so back to the, to the parameters. In vertizite, we have three uh, important parameters. We have A on, on the plane, C on this spectral direction, and uh, in vertizite, you have the double the number of, uh, you have actually in the atomic cell two atoms of each material. And then we have this third parameter, that's the U. That gives the difference, the distance among uh, one species and the other, the closest one. Uh, it's important to see here uh, that U, if you have, a, uh, this is a sp3 uh, hybridization. Usually when you have it free, all four uh, bonds have the same size. In this case, if that, if that was the truth, this number would be 375, and not 386, not 379, not 386. This means that when you grow vertizite, uh, this uh, either goes down or bigger, this distance on the fourth bound. Okay, so. This is what we calculated, this is what the literature shows, so uh, we're, we are good here. We did that with uh, PB, it's okay, structurally okay, so now let's go talking about more important calcula other calculations. Uh, actually, I'm talking about strain, I forgot to say that uh, I can calculate the last constants, there, constants here, and then I calculate the last constants here now with PB and with HSC06, in order to have more realistic uh, elastic constants. So with this, I can, I can extract from material. This is very simple calculation, okay? Nothing uh, complicated. And uh, you see that sometimes I'm not very close and sometimes I'm very close to the, to the parameters, but mostly HSC is close to uh, literature calculations. So, let me just show the band structures. You remember, we have this inversion here, I have here. Uh, usually, uh, in the literature, when I use GW, it's much more expensive than the one we, I use. Uh, I have this uh, small difference here uh, disappears. 
but it's GW people. Uh, 10 times uh, more or even more, Marilla can say, okay? Uh, uh, expensive than the ones I'm calculating. This is good enough, okay? And these are the GW calculations from, uh, from the literature. So we have uh, a feature similar here. Here we are almost there. And here the same, we have this small difference from the others, but this doesn't uh, complicate our, our calculations. Okay, so now, in order to, to understand this train, uh, uh, we have a, a, a hypothesis that I, I will say. Uh, the strain is released through this change of uh, parameter on that growth direction, or this C parameter, this U parameter. Okay, so if we're gonna say that uh, this parameter is along the Z direction, and in Z direction, we have this gamma seven plus is the most important, is, is the orbital that uh, is in that direction. So let's look to this one, to this guy. And then uh, I will not look exactly on this, I will look on all of the, uh, of the three ones. So uh, this is the ordering that I have, uh, aluminum nitride, so this is this and this two, uh, the same for the three materials. Okay, so I have uh, the ordering of, of these guys. <clears throat> and uh, with this, I can calculate uh, the crystal field splitting and the spin orbit splitting on these systems because um, in vertizite, as one direction has, uh, is different from the other, we have an extra field that breaks the symmetry. That's the difference among the plane and uh, the growth direction. So uh, we have to, to have a way to find uh, these parameters in order to, uh, uh, to combine them. And we can use this formula here. And with this formula, we, we define delta one as the difference of gamma seven uh, parallel and gamma, gamma nine. G delta two is gamma seven uh, perpendicular to gamma nine. And using this, we can calculate uh, the, these deltas, okay? So now, uh, let's look to, to electronic parameters. So, so our, our electronic uh, conditions here. So the gap, uh, we have a gap that's very close to the experimental ones. Uh, the, the crystal field splitting is close, not that close, but close to, to, to the experimental ones. And the, the spin orbit splitting is also in the same in the order it, in the three uh, materials. So, with these three parameters, now I can calculate the difference. Uh, let's just so now I have I have spin orbit, crystalline field, the young models that, that I calculated from uh, from the the, the, the GFT calculations. And I need this energy, bounding energy there, uh, the energy caused by uh, the strain. That I can use a model to do that. So <coughs> uh, in order to uh, calculate the U, uh, the, the big U, I need to see the strain where I, I, I can do. So I have uh, the deviation for, from the ideal uh, bond. And that I use as a strain, okay? So I use this as uh, a direct relaxation, the strain that relax in order to calculate the, the, uh, the energy. So, and I can use the Young models in the Z direction. This energy is just uh, calculated by this formula, okay? So I have UIG, uh, U minus, minus UIG, I have this value. I have, uh, I put into this formula, and now I can calculate this U. And now this U, uh, it's, it's there. This U must be the change of energy of this state uh, that comes from uh, the strain, from the release of strain. Let's see. <laughs> to calculate this, I have to take the crystal field out of the picture to, in order to to put the, the usual uh, 
the combination of the three uh, P states in the same place and calculate this difference from this value. So I do that, and when I do that, I have uh, these numbers on that calculation. So this number is not exactly the U, it's the U plus, uh, again, put again then the, the difference on the crystal field. And when I do that, the, the energy that I found is 250, and the actual distance among the two states is 253. For gallium nitride, it's 14 and 12, and for neutral nitride, 78 and 22. And neutral nitride, I cannot uh, say that is very good, but uh, this one, that's the most impressive one, uh, fits quite well. So, uh, so then uh, I show that the <clears throat> the release of strain on this on this particular system is given by uh, this mechanism of sh shrinking or enlarging uh, this specific bond. So that's what I, I would like to say to you. Uh, so uh, these differences were shown to be minor and consistent with external strain model that can correct those bands by, ah, okay. The order of the bands show the difference with, uh, uh, well with then more spe computational expense and finer methods. And uh, the difference that I, I, I may have, I, I, I show here, uh, they are, they are saying that even if I, I small difference on the, on the ordering of the, the gamma 9 and gamma 7 band, uh, I can say uh, that this is a good uh, fitting. Uh, actually, I, I did new calculations slightly uh, changing the U, uh, uh, the distance, in order to exactly fit uh, gamma 7 and gamma 9, and the results are are okay, are, are, quite, are, are quite okay. So we are submitting this in the next days. Thank you very much for attention. Questions? I have a question. So, so why uh, can, you not, can you not use the same functional for the bulk modulus and the band gap? What is the reason for choosing the different functionals for these uh, two uh, The convergence is very slow with uh, HSC. Mm. Yeah, I use more machines. I have, uh, I use a, an I-9. I have a, a, a small machine and I, I'd like to, to be there. I don't want to use the W and so, so, and there is no difference. I did uh, calculations with the same uh, uh, way on other materials, and the difference was not big. So Marilla has a question. So Alexandre, I, I don't think it will change. It's the same question. Why do HSC uh, performs better than PBE to a, for elastic constants while... No, no, no not elastics. No, no. Uh, I calculate the elastic constants, again, with IS, uh, HSC, to be consistent with the uh, electronic calculation. Ah, okay, because okay. PBE is okay. Uh, I did, I did the, the, the optimization, structural uh -huh. optimization with PBE. Yeah, because PBE should be... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. So, for, for, and then I, I did the, the, the structural property. optimization PBE, and then I moved to HSC in order to get correct uh, electronic plus the constants to be oh. consistent and uh, don't have anyone to say, no, you have uh, a constant that is not related to your electronic structure. So I have all of them consistent. Oh, okay. Any further questions? So if not, let's thank the speaker again.